What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Eddie Hearn. Get this. Eddie Hearn discusses his ongoing beef with Leonard Ellerby in thoughts on Gervonta Tank Davis. He says... He doesn't plan to cower away from threats made by Mayweather Promotions CEO Leonard Ellaby. Okay. Um, Hearn said, you have to say Devin now. He says, who views at the top at 135? He says, you have to say Devin now. Can the others beat him? That's another question. I mean, I rank Tank Davis very high. He's a big puncher. He's extremely skillful as well. But Devin has to be the top dog. He's the undisputed champion right now. Ryan is probably the biggest draw out of all those guys. Hasn't yet been tested. I mean, had a good win against Luke Campbell, dropped in the fight. Can he beat Devin Haney? Can he beat Tank Davis? I think the biggest fights in the division is Ryan Garcia against Tank Davis. To be honest with you, that's just a big mix of audiences big mix of fan bases. It's just a huge fight. But there's some great fights in the division. Let's not forget about Vasil Lomachenko. He may beat them all because when he boxed Teofimo Lopez, he did have an injury and he hasn't he wasn't 100%, but you can't take anything away from Teo. But Lomachenko, Haney, Garcia, Tank Davis, great division. Let's see him fight each other in Cambo. So let's not completely rule him out. He says on um, publicly acknowledging his interest in signing Javante Tank Davis, what does he think Davis may do? He said, I don't really know. I mean, we had a legal letter from Leonard Ellaby and Mayweather Promotions telling us to ultimately stop talking or mentioning mentioning Javante Tank Davis or approaching him or whatever they thought they were we were doing. The reality is we have no idea. I presume that that means he's still under contract to Mayweather Promotions. I also saw Tank say that his last fight, in his last fight with them under his contract. So when does the contract expire? What we won't do is approach any fighter that is under contract. So if any opportunity comes to talk to him and he's not under contract, we will make him a huge offer, but let's see. He said they's done, they's done a good job with him, and I don't knock that. He's a big draw, but he's also a great fighter, an exciting fighter, so it's easy easier to do that kind of job. But I feel Mayweather Promotions has done a good job. The problem is he's with a pay-per-view outlet. The model we use is we let those fighters own the pot of the money, and we work for them. That's not prob probably the model that they use they use and Tank Davis will be looking at these stadiums that he's filling up, looking at the pay per view numbers, going, hmm, who gets what here? And we're and with our biggest stars, whatever that's Canelo, wherever that's AJ, you own everything and we work for you. And that's the model that we'd apply to a star like Javante Tank Davis. Let me counterpunch. Um, I don't see anything wrong with Eddie Hearn stating that he will talk to him if he's not in the contract. I think that a lot of guys like Leonard Ellerby, Bob Arum, those guys, they are very territorial about their fighters and they should be. It's like a server with a table. It's like a, a client, any other client, you know, um, with a, a talent, you know, that's how they're going to be, you know, and the truth of the matter is we don't know if he signed. But I'm going to tell you what we do know. We know that Tank Davis blatantly lied to every fucking body. He lied to Brian Kustner. He lied to the world through Brian Kustner. Okay? He said that that's what, this will be my last fight with Golden Boy Promotions. He blatantly said that. And I hate when people do shit like this. They say, oh, I never said I was going to leave the Golden Boy Promotions. Yes, you did. You lied to people and said that you were. So I don't know if he did that intentionally or whatever. I'm not mad at him if he did it to get more money, to get leverage, to get, you know, a piece of a bigger piece of the pie or whatever. That's one thing. But don't lie to people and think people are dumb to say, oh, I didn't say I never said I was leaving a Golden Boy promotion. Yes, you did. We fucking speak English. We speak English. Some of us speak more than English. But you were speaking English when you blatantly told Brian Custer, who heard you say, he said, now this would be your last fight with Golden Boy. Yes, sir. 
it will be. Then he was like, oh, I never said I would leave and post. Okay, stop it and stop. Okay, because that the type of shit that he's doing wasn't cool. And honestly, if I'm a promoter and I hear someone lie like that, you don't know what to expect because, see, here's the thing. If we already caught you on camera lying about what you say you didn't do and we heard what you say, what you did say, who's to say you won't try to get, like, start a bunch of shit and tell someone, well, I'm not with them or whatever, and then you go talk to somebody else, and then they end up, your company that you lied on ends up suing the company that you end up talking to because you're not supposed to do that shit. You know, it's just bad for business. Because that was a bad business move. And uh, like, why would you even put and start a bunch of shit with two promotional companies or whatever? I'm not saying he's going to do that, but I'm just saying, using it as an example, he's a liar. He lied. So he lied on Leonard Ellerby. He lied on Floyd um, Money Mayweather. He lied on the whole outfit and saying, hey, I'm going somewhere else. Now, maybe they told him to lie because, I mean, that's how they have that kind of control. They might have did that. Just say, you know what? Tell them you're leaving us. That'll have that. That'll boost the sales. That might have been the case. And if that's the case, oh, well, cool. You know, because you got to look at all possibilities. But like I wouldn't put my word on the line for the sake of somebody else. And I surely wouldn't lie because somebody told me to. You know what I mean? But then again, that's the difference between Eddie Hearn and Leonard Ellerby. Leonard Ellerby, Bob Arum, Floyd, up under all those guys, you know, at one point in time, they, they're accustomed to, you do what the promoter tells you to do. They're old school. They don't believe in the promoter working the best hot possible fights or trying to get, they ain't worried about none of that shit because why would they when they're acting like king shit over there? You think Floyd Mayweather would want to be a promoter if he had to work for somebody else or work for fighters? No, he looks at it like them motherfuckers work for me. I'm the reason they're doing what they're doing because of me, not the other way around. So the idea of, of Floyd or Leonard Ellerby or Bob Arum thinking and having that type of mindset when it comes to their fighters is absolutely non-negotiable, <laughs> right? That's, I, that, that, that's, that is not what they do. OK, so for uh, Javante Tank Davis and Eddie Hearn, you know, Javante, he's going to stay with I think he's going to stay with Mayweather Promotions, you know, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? It would be a good thing if he did use his own brain, because at one point he was trying to speak up for himself and he got tired of the shit, whatever it was that was going on over there, you know, and then they put him on punishment or whatever. And then, you know, he lashes out a bit. You know what I'm saying? So I think he lashes out because he's not comfortable with some of the things that goes on over there. You know, but if he wants to stay in that situation, he is legally insane. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about Eddie Hearn saying that he will make Javante Tank Davis an offer if he's not on the contract. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been Counterpunch. Peace.